Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with a, a, actually a franchise review, and if you hear a dog barking in the background, it's because there's a lot of dogs around here where I'm at, so, <laughs> sorry about that, but yeah, uh, for another franchise review, this time I thought I'd do the Puppet Master movies, having recently seen them all, and, well, having seen them all many times, and actually owning the majority of them, except for like maybe the last two or three, uh, I'll just go ahead and say it, Puppet Master, uh, Puppet Master is a Charles Band, uh, franchise he does the full moon stuff if you're a fan of stuff like demonic toys trancers uh doll man all that kind of stuff if you like those kind of movies growing up like i do or like i did you'll probably enjoy some of these puppet master films just to go ahead and start off puppet master one is an okay film it's a two-star flick it's okay it's worth watching it has some plot holes some things that don't make sense it, the biggest percent of the movies it takes too long for the puppets to show up when they do show up though the stop motion animation form is good it's fine uh, the movie, the best kill of the movie is at the end when they turn on their master who's this evil dude who starts abusing them and they like cut him up and everything and the puppets all have these kind of cool unique designs like you got Pinhead who's this big body and this little head. You got uh, Blade who kind of looks like uh, death, really. Then he's got a blade in her hand and a hook for the other one. He's pretty much my favorite because he's real cool looking. Then you got Jester. Yeah, it's an okay film. You got this group of psychics or whatever who go to this uh, hotel or um, to try to connect to their dead friend who obviously found the secret to immortality from the puppets and is evil and is going to use it for himself to I guess conquer the world or something and it really goes into detail about it. Um, Puppet Master 2 they bring back their original Puppet Master 2 line who's now crazy because he's been brought back to life. You kind of you kind of get a cool thing here where he's kind of dressed up like an invisible man uh, for most of the movie because his body's like really rotted and decayed. At the end of the film, he, he transfers like his soul into like this big giant living puppet, which is kind of neat. You also get the puppet Torch in this film who has a, well, a torch and he's more like, more electronic, like metal looking. Really, he is metal pretty much compared to the other ones. Leech Woman gets killed in this one. Pretty much the puppets have to like get brain tissue from humans because it's the formula that powers them and keeps them alive. This is the only film that goes with that and it's like totally ignored through the other films. Uh, at the end of it, they turn on Toulon, who starts to become abusive as well, and they fry his ass and burn him and set him on fire, and they bring back this woman they killed to be their new master, and it kind of just ends on a cliffhanger. Once again, this is an okay film. It's slightly weaker than the last film. Um, it's worth it. But just to say off the bat, these are B movies, all of them. None of these movies are spectacular, but uh, some are better than others. This is an okay B movie, just like the first, but it's slightly weaker than the first one. If you like killer doll movies, I would recommend seeing the first two thus far of the franchise. Puppet Master 3 is actually a great movie. I'd give it from 1 to 4. I'd give it 4 as a B-movie puppet killer movie uh, where the puppets are good guys. It's a prequel. Toulon gets revenge on the Nazis for killing his wife. And uh, he has the puppets versus them. And at the end of it, he turns the main Nazi guy into like a giant human marionette puppet. It's actually pretty cool. This is actually a four out of four for a B movie killer puppet movie. This is actually great. I do recommend this one. It's directed by David DiCato, or I think it's how you say his name. It's a great, fun killer B movie flick, killer puppet B movie flick. Puppet Master 4 is once again where the puppets are good. Puppet Master 3, 4, and 5 are pretty much a trilogy that pretty much reboot the series and turn the puppets into good guys and kind of just pretty much ignore Puppet Master 1 and 2. And that's one thing about this series. It constantly reboots itself and changes its timeline and its continuity. Um, so really you could watch pretty much any of these films except for 3, 4, and 5 which are pretty much a trilogy uh, by themselves. Um, Puppet Master 4, you got these this evil demon thing named Sutek, which is what the Puppet Master formula came from. It's a passable, uh, I mean, it's an okay film, once again, like 1 and 2. Not as good as 1 and 2, but it's okay. You got some neat uh, puppet fights between the evil little demon totem things that are kind of neat. And there's this asshole guy in there who's like trying to steal the formula off the new Puppet Master. who's like this nice dude played by, I might be Ron Curry, I think is the dude's name. I know he was in Jason Takes Manhattan as one of the uh, victims in that. Uh, he does fine here. The acting in most of the first four is passable to okay. It's not really bad. Barbara Crampton, actually, from Reanimator, who's extremely hot, has a uh, kind of tiny cameo in the original film. It's an okay film. Puppet Master 5 is pretty much just the same thing as Puppet Master 4. The puppets are still fighting these evil totem things, and uh, the main demon becomes one at the end of it. Their new puppet called Decapitron, who's actually Andre Toulon's spirit put into a puppet, like blows up a portal that the evil puppet's trying to escape through, and that... Um, defeats all the evil puppets 
it's pretty much a happy ending. You could just stop here with three, four, and five as a trilogy if you just want to watch uh, the one, the ones that make sense continuity wise. Puppet Master Six, uh, Curse of the Puppet Master, is a pretty much a remake of the movie from back in way back in the days about a guy turning into a snake. So here it's about a mad doctor who turns a student into a puppet. No connection whatsoever to the continuity of three, four, and five, or even one, two. Um, at the end of the film, the puppets turn on the guy because the, the the dude he transformed into a puppet was like a nice dude that they liked. So at the end of it, they turn on him and like cut him all to pieces, and it pretty much just ends on a cliffhanger with the the main dude who was turned into a puppet, whose name was Tank, uh, electrocuting the dude, electrocuting the puppet master guy and killing him, and it just ends, and this, the continuity is never brought up ever again. And this movie is a zero out of four because it's just nothing but stock footage because they had no budget here at all. After the first five movies, which were all the par which were Paramount was backing the full moon features at this time, the movies just get worse and worse. After this, you got Retro Puppet Master, which is supposed to be a prequel, but once again, the continuity makes no sense. It almost comes off like a PG kids film at times. And you got these other puppets we find out that existed before the main puppets who were like these, well, retro versions of the regular puppets. One of them was like Dr. Death and the other... Other names like that, Cyclops, some of them aren't too bad designed, but the, the movie just doesn't have enough budget to really let the puppets do anything. The bad guys are once again these like demon mummy looking dudes who work for Sutek, the creature who's the villain in 4 and 5. And uh, they just got really lame CGI special effects. All in all, it's a zero film. It's uh, Guy Rolf's uh, last time with Andre Toulon in the <laughs> series as well. Um, after Retro Puppet Master, I believe after that we got... Uh, Puppet Master versus, was it Puppet Master versus the Mark Toys? Which also totally sucked. I'd give it a 0 out of 4. Uh, it was, it's not even really made by Full Moon, and it doesn't really add up at all continuity-wise, or con continuity-wise with the other films, and it's just really stupid. Puppets look horrible. Corey Feldman's in it really hamming it up, and acting's just really hammy. Um, it's based on Christmas, and like this toy company woman or whatever is trying to please Satan. It's just really stupid. Really terrible acting. It's really hammy. Really bad, even for a B film. A total zero. Puppet Master Legacy may have been the one before that one. Um, I may have said amount of order, but Puppet Master Legacy is just a clip show to try to connect the continuity of the films, but it still makes no sense. They're just not able to do it right. Really, there's no continuity in these films, or little to much at all. You could pretty much just watch one and two as its own thing, and then three, four, and five as their own thing, and everything after that is just kind of like a single edition movie that really doesn't connect to anything. Puppet Master. Uh, Puppet Master Legacy is a zero, obviously. Puppet Master um, Access of Evil, which was one of the newer ones they did in like 2000, is supposed to be like an interlequel to uh, the original Puppet Master. It takes place when Toulon was like committing suicide. It takes uh, in the original movie at the beginning of it, at, like the exact same time. It's like around World War II, and there's this dude who wants to go to World War II, but wants to go to the war, but he has um, like a bum leg or whatever. It's a, a low passable movie. It's directed by David Dikatu, who also did Puppet Master 3, the best one in the franchise. And Curse of the Puppet Master, which is probably the worst, or the second worst after Legacy. It's a low passable film. They tried with this film. It's got some good shots in it that are actually kind of okay to decent for a low budget B movie. It's a passable film. The acting of like this Asian villain or whatever is really terrible though. It's a passable film. Puppet Master, Axis Rising or whatever, the one after this, and Axis Termination, the next two trilogy, the, the last two films in this trilogy are both zeros. They're both bad. You got like these evil puppets who are like a, one of them's a wolf man, one of them's like a Nazi that shoots out of her boobs. Um, they just... They're supposed to be stupid fun in like a B movie way, but they just don't really do anything with them. And the main two, like the bum leg dude from Access, um, Access of Evil, and his girlfriend, who were set up to be the heroes of this trilogy, are both dead in like the second movie. So their characters really meant nothing. So yeah, those are both zeros. And Puppet Master: The Littlest Reach, the reboot, I actually already did a review for. So if you want to see that, you can check that out. That's one of the much better ones. So all in all, everything after Part Five is pretty much terrible, except for Access of Evil, which is just passable. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you again with another review or franchise review.